I know my channel generally focuses on retrospectives, hence the looks back part of my name, but given the Mario mania that has swept theaters, I'm going to strike while the iron is still kinda warm. Think of this as a follow-up to my video on the development of the 90s Mario movie. I saw the new animated film the other day, and I definitely have some thoughts, enough that it made me want to make this video. I was really hesitant when this was announced as an Illumination movie. Generally, I'm not a big fan of their work. They're very good at making crowd-pleasers, but their output is often kind of bland as a whole. I thought the first Despicable Me was a solid movie, but the follow-ups had the minions gradually taking over the series, getting louder and more distracting each time. Then you have movies like Sing or The Grinch, which I forgot a few hours after watching, and then there's The Lorax that actively opposes the source material. But hey, they have a good track record when it comes to making financially successful movies. Now, more than ever, the bottom line is important. In a lot of ways, this is probably one of Illumination's best movies. It's been setting box office records for a good reason. It gave Nintendo fans something they've been wanting for decades. A Mario movie that was true to the games. But as you'll see in this review, I think it's something of a double-edged sword. Now, the Mario games typically don't have much of a plot. That works fine most of the time, since the focus is on the gameplay. More than half the mainline games boil down to Bowser has kidnapped the princess, Mario needs to save her. The RPG games show that you can have a more intricate story and still feel like a proper Mario adventure, but for the most part, people don't play Mario for a complex plot. That's fine. But the problem is, this isn't a video game, it's a movie. And it suffers the most, not from the By the Numbers plot, but from a lack of strong characters in an otherwise enjoyable flick. In some ways, this makes Mario the perfect franchise for Illumination. I found one of their biggest problems is a lack of focus. Sing and the Despicable Me sequels are good examples. Sing introduces a slew of characters, many of whom have their own storylines going throughout the movie. The singing competition is what brings them all together, but every contestant has their own baggage in their personal lives. The movie tries to give them all equal focus, but it's an animated film geared towards families and younger kids, so there's not much time to develop any of the plots. I was left not really caring that much about any of the characters, since I never really got to know any of them. Despicable Me 3 similarly tries to do four or five plots at once, and they all feel underdeveloped as a result. Disney, when they were on their A-game, was aware of that kind of problem and actively tried to work against it. In early versions of The Little Mermaid, Ariel had yet another animal friend, an adventurous dolphin. The directors realized that one too many characters was taking focus away from the story, so they cut him out. There's a big divide right now between critics and fans. I'm generally inclined to side with the fans for the most part, but one thing the critics are saying that I half agree with is about the story. There's complaints that it's too bland, too formulaic. I'm okay with that since this is a Mario movie. This is the story I was expecting. My problem is that in true Illumination fashion, a lot of the characters still feel underdeveloped. Mario is fine as a blank slate in the games. He's as generic as they come, but it serves the needs of the games perfectly. He's the blue-collar everyman who rises to the challenge and gets to be a hero. I just wish they could have given him more of a personality in the movie since, again, this is a different medium. I know everyone was bagging on Chris Pratt for a while, and while I do wish they had gotten a Danny DeVito type instead, I don't know if Pratt really had that much to work with. Mario is sometimes compared to Mickey Mouse as a mascot, and it makes perfect sense. Both of them can be dynamic and engaging when written as an actual character, but most of the time they're portrayed as painfully generic. Similarly, Toad is cute and spunky, but I didn't really get a good read on him. Why does he instantly latch onto Mario and proclaim them to be best friends? Is Toad a loner and sees Mario as a kindred spirit? Does he sense that Mario also yearns for adventure like he does? I feel like I kind of have to make up these theories because unless I'm misremembering, they really don't tell us. Luigi fares better. Ever since the early 2000s, Luigi has been the brother with a more defined personality. He's silly, awkward, clumsy, sometimes cowardly, but he's able to be the hero in the end. I think for a lot of us, Luigi is the more relatable character, and Charlie Day does a great job of that. I thought the bond between Mario and Luigi was very sweet, but they spent a lot of the movies separated. It was an unexpected choice, but it makes the scenes when they're together even more satisfying. On that note, I wish there's more material with Mario and Bowser being directly opposed. Bowser was the best part, to the surprise of no one. It's Jack Black having the time of his life. 
While Bowser and Mario are aware of each other for most of the movie, they don't actually meet until the final act. I wish they had worked in a scene or two beforehand where they could face off, even if it wasn't to the extent of the final battle. Hero-villain relationships are important in these kinds of stories, especially foes as famous as these two. That's one thing I liked about the 90s movie, even in the early drafts of that script. Mario and Koopa only know each other for the span of a day or so, but you believe that they are ready to kill each other by the end on a personal level. This movie just didn't hit as hard. The most interesting relationship that emerged here was Mario and Donkey Kong. It was kind of surprising at first, but it actually makes a lot of sense. Their rivalry goes back the farthest. A lot of games featuring both characters follow the same beats. They're friends, until they're enemies, until they're friends again. I'm not the biggest Seth Rogen fan, but he was generally pretty fun as DK. I'm a little mixed on how I feel about Princess Peach. I'm fine with her taking part in the action. She doesn't have to be the damsel all the time. In fact, in games like Super Mario Bros. 2 and Mario 3D World, she's one of the most helpful players. It makes sense that having grown up in the Mushroom Kingdom, she'd know her way around. I just kind of wish they had her go through the same training that Mario does. I mean, she says she did, but then admits she got it right the first time, while Mario spends an entire day getting his butt handed to him. I think they made her a little too perfect in that regard. Even though Mario is kind of bland, we still root for him because we see him keep trying, no matter how bad he is at the start, or how painful his journey gets. Having Peach previously know firsthand what Mario is going through now would have made her more relatable, and it would have strengthened their bond. Okay, let me focus on some positive aspects here. I don't want you to think that I didn't like this movie. It was really interesting meeting Mario and Luigi's family. I think the most we've ever seen of their parents is a glimpse at the end of Yoshi's Island. And at the end of Yoshi's New Island, but we don't talk about that. Here we get to meet all their relatives, establishing the brothers as sort of the family joke. I don't think I was ever missing anything by not knowing what Mario's parents look like, but it was very nice to finally see them. I love how the music was handled too. While Alan Silvestri wrote a fine score for the 90s movie, I think we were all a little disappointed that he barely referenced the game's incredibly memorable themes. Composer Brian Tyler went the opposite direction in this movie, wonderfully arranging all the Mario songs we know and love for most of the film's duration. I'll definitely be giving the soundtrack a listen. The references in general were really off the charts here. Cameos by characters we haven't seen in ages, nods to other Nintendo franchises, the Super Show theme song Rainbow Road. It was almost overwhelming how many tidbits they threw at us. Unfortunately, it sometimes felt like the movie was relying too much on this, and became easy to lose track on what was actually going on. Again, Illumination kind of has a lack of focus. Now don't get me wrong, I was geeking out, and it shows that the filmmakers know their material, but I wish the same thought and care was put into the characters themselves. So as you can see, that is what I keep going back to. I liked this movie, but I wish the characters were stronger. We know they can be. We love them for a reason, and there is so much potential. In the sequel, and whatever other Nintendo movies are to follow, I hope they put more emphasis on characterization. Everything else is going in a pretty good direction, but when I watch the next Mario movie, I hope I can see more of who Mario is. So the child in me is giving this one an A. My adult self is inclined to give it a B, but I'll compromise with a B+. Keep it up, Nintendo. But please don't be afraid to make these characters actual characters.